This audio recording is intended to facilitate the gradual release of confidential documents pertaining to a top-secret exchange program where 12 U.S. military personnel went to the planet Serpo, which was located in the Zeta Reticuli star system between the years 1965 and 1978. Release 28. The Real Story Behind the Pope's Visit Anonymous comments on various hot topic UFO subjects including an update on the famous Gate 3 incident and what the follow-up FBI AFOSI investigation revealed, the Star Trek-like weapon used by the CBE, J. Rod's confession to his deadly deed, and his house base arrest at Area 51. The story behind the story of the Pope's April 2008 visit to America. Learn what sparked the Vatican to make their stunning announcement a month later on extraterrestrial life forms in our universe, a global exclusive. Earth-shattering revelations. Serpo Eben's religious belief systems revealed. Learn of the likeness between the Eben religious rituals and those of Earth and which two Earth religions have a similarity in the Eben belief or life after death. A real head-turner. Anonymous comments on the alleged UFO UN meeting on ETs. Number one, I have no information about an alleged UFO UN meeting about extraterrestrials. None of my sources know anything about this who are both in and out of the UN, and they all possess need to know security clearances. Number two, I don't know a Clay Pickering nor a Robert Morningstar. Never heard of them. What is your question regarding them? What are the contacts for the alleged UFO UN meeting? Number three, I believe 95% of all crop circles are made by man. Number four, what drones? The UFO community embarrasses itself with such wild stories and a creative collective imagination. Anonymous. Anonymous comments on the Phoenix Lights. The lights seen over Phoenix several years ago were U.S. Air Force National Guard planes from the Maryland National Guard conducting nighttime missions by dropping aerial flares. The most recent sightings are unexplained. We have no direct knowledge of the origin of the lights. Anonymous. Anonymous comments on Mexico's Roswell. Victor. There is only one Roswell, and that is the one which occurred in July 1947. The other Roswell you asked about is nothing more than wild speculation based on chance, random events. It did not happen. Anonymous. Reference. Mexico's Roswell. The 1974 Chihuahua UFO crash. Ruben Urarte and No Torres. Update. Anonymous. Expanded comments on the Gate 3 incident. A further explanation of Project Serpo, release number 23. Victor. There are still classified portions of this incident that have not been released. First of all, the weapon used by the CBE, cloned biological entity, was stolen from a research laboratory room. The weapon was an energy-directed device, EDD, which was given to us by the Ebens. The EDD was in a locked container inside the S2 research room. An extensive investigation disclosed that J. Rod had obtained the weapon, unlocked the CBE's room, and gave the CBE the weapon. Why? J-Rod wanted the CBE to protect himself. The EDD could be set for stun, similar to a present-day taser, or the kill mode. J-Rod wanted the CBE to escape and be free. J-Rod realized he could never be free since he had a duty and an obligation to stay. J-Rod was extremely dedicated but apparently did not feel the CBE needed to be contained. J-Rod fully confessed to releasing the CBE. J-Rod was later confined and a restraining device was placed on his legs. CBE could not fully communicate in English. J-Rod could translate the words from the CBE to English. None of the officials doubted J-Rod would falsify any word meaning from the CBE to English. Anonymous Anonymous comments on Pope Benedict XVI's six-day visit to New York City and Washington, D.C. Saved email message from Anonymous, date Wednesday, April 23, 2008, 9.31 a.m., PDT plus 3, to Victor, GM, at webtv.net. Subject, our special guest, equals OSG. Victor, 
Our special guest just arrived back from a trip to the East where he had a personal conversation with the Pope, Pope Benedict XVI. The Pope knows about OSG's past missions. The Pope was excited to hear details. OSG originally had just 30 minutes to brief the Pope, but that time ended up being two hours. Pope Benedict XVI considered his meeting with OSG as a very special birthday present. Date of birth, Saturday, April 16, 1927, during his six-day stay between Tuesday, April 15, when he touched down at Andrews Air Force Base, to his departure on Sunday, April 20, from Kennedy International Airport in Queens, New York. OSG is alive and well. She, he, it was awed by his, her, it's two-hour meeting with the Pope. OSG has not spoken with any of the other Popes. However, Pope Benedict XVI specifically singled out OSG. The Pope knew of his, its interstellar journey and knew about his fellow comrades' stories regarding the cosmos. Although OSG and his crew never spoke with the Pope, they did have numerous contacts with representatives of the Vatican. Something you should let people know about on your huge list. When OSG met with the Pope, they discussed his trip from Serpo, the 13-year stay of our 11 team members, their interaction with the Ebens, the past visitation of the Ebens to planet Earth, and the future. The Pope knew about the trip and knew about the six most recent past visitation of the Ebens to our Earth. They occurred will occur on the following dates. Friday, August 18, 1978. Thursday, April 28, 1983. Sunday, April 7, 1991. Tuesday, October 22, 1996. Sunday, November 28, 1999. Wednesday, November 14, 2001. November 2009. No set date as of Project Serpo release number 28 for this unofficial visit. The Ebens are due back to Earth for an official visit on Thursday, November 11, 2010. As in the past, this visit will occur at the Nevada test site. Pointing to the stars, satellite dishes and an extensive communication complex wait to meet the Ebens for their next two November visitations to Earth. Click on the link below for a picture of a satellite dish, similar to the two seen at the Groom Lake Area 51 test site facility. All visitations occurred at the sprawling Groom Lake complex. During each visit, a representative from the Vatican was present. The Pope was particularly interested in the religious activity of the Ebens. The Ebens worship a god. The Pope feels their god is the same as ours. The Ebens worship god differently, but not so much. In fact, OSG brought artifacts of the Ebens god that fits directly into our Christian god. Several Eben paintings, sculptured statues, and carved fetishes were similar to our god. In fact, the story of their god appearing thousands of years ago on Serpo and setting up religious sects on their planet is similar to our story of Jesus. The Ebens chant verses which, when translated, are similar to our prayers. The Eben chant contains 26 verses which they repeat every day at their prayer hour, which is in the afternoon Serpo day. The chants sound like Tibetan chants. On a particular even day of their year, the Ebens expand the chants to 38 verses. The extra 12 chants pertain to angels, which we have translated to mean saints, who have helped the Eben society. This information has never been released. The basic belief religion of the Ebens are simple. However, their practice is very complex. The Ebens worship one god, which they call an entity, and they have religious symbols that reflect their religious entities, which they call sub-entities. This would be similar to our identification with saints. The Ebens' belief in life after death is similar to the Roman Catholic Church and to some Eastern religions' doctrines. Once an Eben dies, their soul, bioplasmic body, is taken from the body by these sub-entities, saints, and are cleansed of all their sins. The soul is then taken to a midpoint, Catholics would call it purgatory, between heaven and that midpoint. Then, once the soul is ready, it is taken to the supreme plateau, heaven, where it remains for an eternity. Their belief becomes much more complex at this point. Some souls, called the arranged, that is their word, are prepared for entry back into the living society, for example, this plane of existence. The Evens believe that if they perform some specific act, referred to as karma on earth, during their regular life, 
they can then come back to the living life in another body. The Evens believe in reincarnation and the eternity of the soul. The Evens do not believe that animals or their sworn enemies or other space-traveling races have souls. This is something that might help hold people over on the Project Serpo subject matter until all of our files and materials have been given back to us from the Department of Defense. More to come in Fall 2008. Anonymous. Biographical sketch of Pope Benedict XVI. Birth name, Joseph Alos Ratzinger. Papacy began 19th April 2005. Papacy ended. No date. Predecessor, John Paul II. Born Saturday, April 16th, 1927, age 81. Mokto an in Bavaria, Germany. Pope Benedict XVI. Reference style, His Holiness. Spoken style, Your Holiness. Religious style, Holy Father. Posthumous style, Not Applicable. Pope Benedict XVI, Latin, Benedictus P.P. XVI, is the 265th and reigning Pope, by virtue of his office of Bishop of Rome, the spiritual head of the Roman Catholic Church, and as such, sovereign of the Vatican City State. He was elected on Tuesday, April 19, 2005, in a papal conclave, celebrated his papal inauguration mass on Sunday, April 24, 2005, and took possession of his cathedral, the Basilica of St. John Lateran, on May 7, 2005. Pope Benedict XVI has both German and Vatican citizenship. Benedict XVI is a respected Roman Catholic theologian and a prolific best-selling author, a defender of traditional Catholic doctrine and values. Like his predecessor, Benedict XVI maintains the traditional Catholic doctrines on artificial birth control, abortion, and homosexuality. Benedict XVI was elected Pope at the age of 78. He is the oldest person to have been elected Pope since Pope Clement XII, 1730-40, as well as his native German, Benedict XVI fluently speaks Italian, French, English, Spanish, and Latin, and has a knowledge of Portuguese. He can read ancient Greek and Biblical Hebrew. He has stated that his first foreign language is French. He plays the piano and has a preference for Mozart and Bach. Ratzinger chose the pontifical name Benedict, which in Latin means the blessed, in honor of both Pope Benedict XV and St. Benedict of Nursia. Bibliography, World Religions, The Illustrated Guide. Dictionary of Religions. The Handy Religion Answer Book. The Complete Idiot's Guide to Reincarnation. Flashback to January 1994. The intelligence wizard of the black world, retired Army Bobby Ray Inman, speaks candidly about UFOs and alien life forms to a UFO author. Begin. Today, January 13, 1994, this press release letter was mailed to several members of the Senate Armed Services Committee, which will hold confirmation hearings for Secretary of Defense designate Admiral Bobby Ray Inman, retired, and several press organizations. The CC list at the bottom of the letter shows to whom this was mailed. As stated, our purpose was only to bring these statements to the attention of the senators and the press so that they may be addressed, perhaps to get an inch closer to the truth. Of course, the attachments are not reproduced. Jim Klotz, C-U-F-O-N-S-Y-S-O-P. For immediate release, January 12, 1994. Has Secretary of Defense designate Admiral Bobby Ray Inman retired made statements indicating that the U.S. government has extraterrestrial craft in its possession? Admiral Inman has been credited with making such statements which have been construed as meaning that he was aware that recovered vehicles, meaning extraterrestrial alien craft, have been in possession of the government for over 10 years. He has some expertise in the area of UFO before his retirement, that he has been aware of a program to indoctrinate the public in UFO matters, that he understood who is behind the technology in the crafts, meaning extraterrestrial alien beings, that the matter of U.S. government recovery and possession of alien UFO craft was covered by the national security laws. We are writing to bring to your attention controversial claims made about statements made by Admiral Inman. These claims have been published in the United Kingdom and the United States in books, UK, Alien Liaison, 1991, and in the U.S., Alien Update, 1993, and reiterated in a slightly different form, 
U.S. alien contact. Top secret UFO files revealed. 1993, all by Timothy Good. Please see bibliography for further information. The subject of UFOs is a controversial one, but the subject of U.S. government possession of recovered alien craft is even more controversial. This has and continues to be denied by every government agency queried. We are releasing this statement as a cover document to a letter which, along with its attachment, calls the attention of the Armed Services Committee to these claims. It is not our intention to attempt to affect the outcome of confirmation hearings or to impugn Admiral Inman's fine record or him personally in any way. It is our intention to make this information available so that the confirmation hearings provide an opportunity to address this subject and thereby deal with these controversial issues. We feel that addressing this issue is as important for Admiral Inman as it is for the country. Break. January 12, 1994, Washington, D.C. In Mr. Good's books, Mr. Oschler attributes the statements at issue here to Admiral Inman during a July 1989 telephone conversation, which was recorded by Oschler only for note-taking purposes. Portions of the transcript of the recorded conversation are reproduced in Alien Update and portions of the tape have been played on a 1991 episode of the television documentary program, Now It Can Be Told. Mr. Oshler credits Admiral Inman with statements indicating that MJ-12 meant something to him, page 208, Alien Update, that he has been aware of a program to indoctrinate the public in UFO matters prior to his retirement page 211, Alien Update, that he had some expertise in the area of UFOs, but his information was out of date at the time of the conversation, page 211, Alien Update, that the pace at which things move in that field, UFO-related technological research, was high, page 212, Alien Update, that he was familiar with the use of the term craft, meaning UFO, page 212, Alien Update that he understood who was behind the technology in the crafts, meaning extraterrestrial alien beings, page 212 to 213, alien update, that he referred Mr. Oshler to CIA Deputy Director for Science and Technology, Everett Heinemann, and former Director of Naval Intelligence, Summer Shapiro, in response to Mr. Oshler's request for guidance in his efforts to get closer to MJ-12, page 213, alien update that he acknowledged that recovered vehicles, for example, extraterrestrial craft, have been in possession of the U.S. government for over 10 years, that access to them was then denied, page 214, alien update, that his executive assistant acknowledged that the Admiral Inman was aware that the matter under discussion, U.S. government recovery and possession of UFO craft, was covered by the national security laws, page 214, alien update, the matter of MJ-12, or the Majestic 12, is raised by Bob Oshler, who reports that it has been suggested that Admiral Inman was an actual member or an insider of MJ-12. This is tantamount to accusing Admiral Inman of being a participating member of a secret inner government which has been credited in print with everything from merely keeping secret certain facts to intimidation of witnesses and much more persuasive and sinister manipulation, for this is the reputation of MJ-12. MJ-12 is purportedly an organization set up by President Truman in 1947 in response to the purported recovery of a crashed extraterrestrial craft in New Mexico. The evidence for the existence of MJ-12 is in the nature of a presidential briefing paper. Despite extensive study and even more extensive speculation about its implications, the MJ-12 briefing paper is by no means a verified document. Recently, after years of no record responses to Freedom of Information Act FOIA request regarding the authenticity of the MJ-12 paper, government agencies have shifted to response of bogus and cannot be authenticated as genuine documents. Reasons for this apparent change in policy are unknown. A recent FBI FOIA release containing the MJ-12 briefing papers is reproduced in attachment number four. We quote the USA Today article, Inman Gets Defense Duty, by Steve Camaro, as printed in the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, December 17-19, 1993 issue. 
Senator John Warner, R. Virginia, a former Navy secretary, said it's a superb choice. He has an absolute credibility with the men and women in uniform. Yet, Admiral Inman is being credited with very controversial statements regarding a subject which has and continues to receive denials from every government agency queried. Might Admiral Inman's absolute credibility come into question were he to be viewed as holding a view opposite to repeated official pronouncements? Or of making what are perceived to be very controversial statements in a very controversial subject matter? After all, should it be true that recovered extraterrestrial artifacts are in the possession of the U.S. government would be the greatest story of all time? Let us assure you that we take the matter of having verifiable information available seriously and reiterate that our purpose is only to facilitate addressing these issues. Signed, Del Goody. Signed, James Klotz. Bibliography. Number 1. Alien Liaison, Timothy Good, 1991. Number 2. Alien Update, Timothy Good, 1993. Number 3. Alien Contact, Top Secret UFO Files Revealed, Timothy Good, 1993. Further reference regarding MJ-12. Final report on Operation Majestic 12, Stanton T. Friedman, April 1990. CUFON, Computer UFO Network, Seattle, Washington, USA, 1206-776-0382. Please credit CUFON as the source of this material. End. Foreign Technology Division, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Even Alien Schematic Mock-Up. Out There, The Jackie Gleason, Richard Nixon UFO Story. Source, a member of the DIA-6. Internet email sniffers circa 1997. Computer sniffing may have come a long way since then. Victor. Puzzle Palace co-author Wayne Madsen, in an article written for the June 1995 issue of Computer Fraud and Security Bulletin, Elsevier Advanced Technology Publications, wrote that, according to well-placed sources within the federal government and the Internet Service Provider Industry, the National Security Agency, NSA, is actively sniffing several key Internet router and gateway hosts. Madsen says the NSA concentrates its surveillance on destination and origination hosts, as well as sniffing for specific keywords and phrases. He claims his sources have confirmed that the NSA has contracted with an unnamed private company to develop the software needed to capture Internet data of interest to the agency. According to Madsen, the NSA monitors traffic primarily at two Internet routers controlled by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, one in College Park, Maryland, dubbed Fixed East, and another at NASA Arms Research Center in Sunnyvale, California, Fix West. Other NSA Internet sniffers, he said, operate at busy routers known as May East and East Coast Hub, May West, a West Coast Hub, SIX, reportedly based in San Jose, and SWAB, a Northern Virginia router operated by Bell Atlantic. Matson says the NSA may also be monitoring traffic at network access points, the large Internet gateways operated by regional and long-distance service providers. The NAPs allegedly under surveillance are in Pasaka, New Jersey, operated by Sprint, Chicago, run by Ameritech and Bell Communications Research, and San Francisco, Pacific Bell. Madsen claims the NSA has deals with Microsoft, Lotus, and Netscape to prevent anonymous emails. One senior federal government source has reported that NSA has been particularly successful in convincing key members of the U.S. software industry to cooperate with it in producing software that makes Internet messages easier for NSA to intercept and if they are encrypted to decode, Matson wrote. A knowledgeable government source claims that the NSA has concluded agreements with Microsoft, Lotus, and Netscape to permit the introduction of the means to prevent the anonymity of Internet electronic mail, the use of cryptographic key escrow, as well as software industry acceptance of the NSA-developed Digital Signature Standard, DSS. Is the NSA really snooping on the net? And if they are, would that violate the agency's charter? which specifically prohibits it from spying within the U.S.? Well, net traffic is routed from God knows where to God knows where around the world, says George Washington University Professor Lance Hoffman, a professor of communications and telecommunications systems policy at George Washington University.
So, if the NSA is doing this, they could say they are not violating their charter not to spy in the U.S. That's the thing. Intelligent routers send stuff any which way. All supporting documentation, research compiled and provided by Victor Martinez. And that is the end of this video. If you like things like this, please give this video a thumbs up. Please share this video. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I'll have more things like this. Take care.